talk to me a little bit about how you approach getting people out of that comfort zone. Because that is certainly, uh, and oftentimes, especially when I'm meeting with more senior level people, um, there's a certain level of anxiety that may come with that or uh, a certain um, level of expectation or stress I may put on myself that maybe isn't necessary. So do you have any kind of strategies around that or thoughts about it? Yeah. In fact, I'll give you three um, of the contributions that I think might be most impactful and most immediate that you could apply. Okay. And to your point, the first place we focus besides content is your self-talk. So are you aware you talk to yourself? Uh, yeah, in my head all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. It's like this, this, you know, unconscious, it's often subconscious, but this voice in our head that goes on all the time. And uh, I watch a lot of facilitators, again, in all different shapes and walks of life. And I can almost read their self-talk. It's like a billboard over their forehead. If they're nervous, if it's a high stakes situation where they're trying to sell or influence, that voice in your head, it's, it's, uh, it has such an impact on your emotions and your emotions drive your behavior. So if you're saying to yourself before a big meeting, oh my gosh, I didn't have enough time to prepare, or what if they ask me a tricky question and I can't answer, it's gonna make you feel nervous and anxious. And what are you gonna do? Probably talk too fast, probably not ask a lot of questions, just lead with what you know and try to get that all out instead of really creating this back and forth dynamic that demonstrates you've got presence and you're, you know, you deserve that seat at the table. Yeah, so. Sometimes I find myself just regurgitating what my, my boss says to me. Completely. So. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We can all relate to that. Yeah. So, so how about this? As, as many of us transition from in-person to online training, um, you know, what sort of advice do you have for delivering really engaging, interactive, memorable experiences? Mm -hmm. um, so the first tip I would have is around the skill of listening. And uh, most people don't realize that they could be better at listening. And I think that uh, going into this virtual environment we've had to really raise our game at being a listener. I'll give you an example. I was just watching a, a facilitator uh, yesterday and uh, they, they, they were great, had a lot of good knowledge, even asked really good questions, but they didn't pause. And, and I think I know why, because you know when you're face to face and you pause and you can look around a room or around the table and see if people are ready to respond, but now pausing is intimidating because it's like, are you with me? <laughs> Did the call drop? Did I make you know, sense? And what I see happening now is that, uh, you know, and then when people are nervous, they don't create space for uh, pause, a moment of silence, let people, especially if you ask a good question, it's gonna take people a second to think it. why. So yeah. listening to me is what I've noticed is where we all have to just raise our capability and stretch even further into um, curious questions, being really, you know, thoughtful. Because um, when I hear any questions, any questions, usually that gets crickets. Yeah. Like, you know, no one will answer that. So you have to get better at your questions and you have to create more space for people to think and then reply. 